What's going on guys, Shane here. Today we're talking about how to spice up your heavy bag workout. Instead of just putting on the gloves and setting a timer for three minutes and wowing on the bag, let's get a little bit more organized. So these are gonna be some ways that you can challenge yourself and just have a little bit more fun. Let's take a look at the first one. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna focus on today is defense and countering. Now this is a drill that I shared in a previous video, but it's a great one, definitely worth sharing again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw any combination, jab, cross, hook, cross. And whatever we finish with, we're gonna imagine that our opponent is throwing that exact shot back. We're gonna defend against it, and then we're gonna counter that. So if I finish with the right straight, I'm gonna imagine that they throw a right straight back. So I'm gonna slip, I'm gonna work the body with the left hook. Now I imagine they throw a left hook, so I block the right side of my body, and I counter uppercut hook cross. They throw that cross again, maybe this time I helmet guard, and I come over top with a hook and a hook. Finish with the left hook, so they throw a left hook, I go underneath of that shot. Now I can do this with just boxing, or I can start to work in my kicks. I finish with a right kick, they throw a right kick. I three point block and I come in with the left hook and a rear knee. They throw the knee, I create an angle and I throw whatever shot. So it's a great way to get the mind firing, to get the brain thinking. And the quicker that you can visualize that shot coming in and work your reaction, the more realistic it's going to be in a fight. So you're improving your reaction time, you're working your defense and you're working your counters. Great drill, give this one a try. Okay, the next drill I call the one to five pyramid, and this is another one that you can do with boxing or with kicks as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with just a single shot. So let's say we go with a jab, and then we add on another one. So we go with two shots, cross jab. Now we do any three shots. Let's go three left hooks, one, two, three. Then we do four, one, two, three, four. Then we do five, one, two, three, four, five. Then we start working back down. Then we go back to four, one, two, three, four jabs. Then we go back to three, Cross, hook, cross, then we do two, cross, cross, then we go back to one, uppercut. So it can be any punches that you want, but the amount that you throw, one to five, and like I said, you can also do kicks as well. So we can do a teep for one, we can do a jab, knee for two, we can do a jab, elbow, elbow for three, hook, hook, kick, kick for four, punch up, one, two, three, four, Five knees could be number five. And then we work our way back down. So the pyramid one to five, great one. Give it a try on the bag. Okay, the next one is doing sprints on the bag. Now, feel free to get creative because you can do any real exercises in a sprint format. I'll give you a couple different options here. So the first one, we're gonna do a 30-30-30. So for the first 30 seconds, I'm working just perfect technique. I'm working my strategy, I'm working my defense, my head movement, my angles and footwork. And I'm just trying to focus on good form and good breathing. I want to pace myself because the next 30 seconds is speed. I'm going high knees, fast punches, ones and twos. As fast as I can for 30 seconds. Then we go right to power. Every shot is a knockout. Every shot breaks ribs or breaks the jaw. Just rip it into that bag. Then we go right back to technique. So we have to focus on catching our breath, pacing ourselves, having good strategy, good defense. Not really focusing too much on power or speed. Like I said, just good technique. Then we go back to the speed, back to the power, and that'll be a full three minutes. Another one that you could do could be just 20 punches, 20 straights, do a burpee. 20 straights, do a burpee. You can do that for a minute, you can do that for two minutes. Just a couple of different options. Like I said, feel free to get creative. Any type of sprint or interval work on the heavy bag is a great way to get in shape and get your endurance up. The next drill is gonna focus on clinch fighting. A lot of us tend to stay on the outside and we use the leverage in our arms for our straight punches, our hooks, our overhands. But take a step closer. Get on the inside and work the clinch. If you're boxing, you still can do this as well, right? I can go with my lead shoulder and forearm on the bag and I can work this hip bump, elbow bump, and then work some shots. And then I can go right back to getting a forearm on the bag. I create an angle, I throw a couple punches, I get a forearm on the bag. Create an angle, throw a couple punches, forearm on the bag, create an angle. It's a great way to work that inside fighting, get underneath of shots, and just be a little bit more aggressive. If it's Muay Thai, obvious, right? We got elbows, clinch up, we got knees. We wanna push and pull and redirect the bag. You can get a great, great workout doing skip knees, clinching up, push and pulling, just really controlling that bag. MMA, you can work on getting underneath, practicing a penetration shot or getting body locks. So possibilities are endless, but instead of working on the outside, also work on the inside, just like you're gonna do in a fight. And the last drill that you can do on the heavy bag is doing it all in a switch stance or switching your stance throughout the round. So this is a great way of making sure that both sides of your body are balanced. Sometimes you'll notice that your left hip is a little tighter than your right hip 
or your left shoulder is a little more developed. And that's probably because you're throwing more jabs, you're throwing more punches, just more reps on this side. And a great way that you can balance out the body is to switch your stance and work the opposite side. Quick story, my original boxing coach had me stand in a southpaw stance and work my right jab. Reason being is because my cross was really slow, I would push it, there was no real pop to it, and he was like, I need you to throw it more like a jab. So we switched our stance, and he had me throwing it as a jab. Boom. It got better so that when I went back into my orthodox stance, it had a lot more pop, just like a jab. All right, so repping it out, switching the sides, is a great way to balance the body. Not only that, guys, but fighters are evolving. In MMA, in boxing, people are switching their stances a lot more. It pretty much doubles up your arsenal. It makes you twice as dangerous. If you're only working one side, you're only good in that side, right? Whether you break your hand or in a scuffle something happens and you're now in the switch stance, you wanna feel comfortable, you wanna feel dangerous in that switch stance and you do that in your training. So ways that you can switch your stance are in the middle of a combo. I can do it on the jab, right? Every time I throw a jab, I switch my feet. So jab, switch my feet, and now I'm in the switch stance. Now I'm jabbing with my right, switch, now I'm back to orthodox, okay? Another one could just be on the retreat. I throw a couple punches, I step back, now I'm in a switch stance. Or maybe after I throw a kick, I pull it all the way back to a southpaw stance. Another way is shifting. So after I throw a right hand, if I'm in an orthodox stance, I just let my momentum carry me forward into the southpaw. So I throw the right hand, my right leg comes forward, boom, now I'm southpaw. Or I do it from southpaw, I throw the left, now I'm back in orthodox, okay? So switch it up uh, during the round or dedicate an entire round to the opposite stance that you're dominant in. There you have it, guys. I mean, just get creative. These are just a couple of ideas, but there's literally endless possibilities of things that you can do. Instead of just ripping into the heavy bag, have a focus, have an intention, set it, and then make sure you stick to it. Until next time, be sure to subscribe to get the fight tips before your opponent does. Until then, I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the underdogs.